so many big stories have started 2024 off with a bang to go through them. I have the owner and creator of Gateway Pundit, Jim Hoft, to help me better understand these massive breaking stories. Jim, thank you so much for coming on. Steven, it's good to be with you again. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year to you. You guys are just continue to grow, have record breaking numbers as we spoke about uh, off camera, despite the censorship. You know, our last video, I would love if people watching this would give this video a like and leave a comment because our last video, as you, as you saw, Jim, I sent you evidence that we had been suppressed. And so just like you, I'm trying to overcome that suppression. Um, but I've got four big stories that you guys are covering that I want to jump into. The first one, I, I think, must have these millionaires and billionaires and politicians uh, losing sleep. But why, after all of these years, would a judge finally have the courage and the foresight to release all of the names connected to Jeffrey Epstein? And what do you think is going to be the end result of that? Yeah, so that's some pretty big news. A lot of people are talking um, on, and there's a lot of chatter going on on the interweb and uh, the social media. Uh, I think uh, it's happening now. And actually, uh, at Gateway Pundit, we sued uh, about a year and a half ago to get those names. We were one of the first to sue. Um, and uh, so we spent some money on that. Uh, they, they, uh, hemmed and hawed and gave us different excuses uh, why it could not be released to us. But we uh, we put through a couple, we went through this a couple of times, a couple of um, reiterations of this, and uh, we weren't very successful. But um, I'm glad that some people have followed through. And now what we have is this case where, uh, this is with Ghislaine Maxwell. It has to do with her, and it has to do with one of the, per, uh, the one of the victims and um, so the judge did rule that they were going to release in the next few days. It's supposed to be this week. So, uh, you know, could be any time. Uh, the list of uh, uh, the clients for, for Jeffrey Epstein, there have already been a couple of names that have leaked out. One was uh, uh, Alan Dershowitz. Uh, don't know. And uh, of course, when I say this, I have no idea what extent uh, that means. I don't know if that means a a plane ride somewhere or whatever. And I know that there's some people have already come out and said, oh, I, I took a ride on his plane one time. And they, they insist that was all of the contact they had with Jeffrey Epstein. I, um, but, but, you know, I can't defend anyone here and I don't know, I don't know anything. I can't throw any allegations out there, but Ellen Dershowitz's name was mentioned. Some of the housekeeper's names were mentioned. And then, of course, this weekend, we heard that client number 36 um, is likely Bill Clinton. And we've reported back in 2014 or 2016 that Clinton had take, he, he took uh, some 20 some rides on the Lolita Express, the plane that was Jeffrey Epstein's. Um, and that was from some of the flight logs that were leaked out. Um, we also have reported before that Bill and Hillary um, which is really interesting. We're at the ranch that Epstein had in New Mexico and had stayed there. So um, really, really interesting that Hillary would be tagging along. Um, so uh, it's, 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 uh, it's going to be, uh, could be quite a week. Um, I, I, I did read that today that some of the names and numbers that they're releasing um, could be the same name, but listed a couple times. So we, we will see that. And but uh, with over 100 names, I think we're, we're, we're expecting to see it should be very revealing. And this is the first glimpse we've had of this this list. So they the elites have certainly protected this for several years now. Yeah, well, and the, the thing that I wish that they would also be able to separate and, and they probably won't is, OK, who was he trying to blackmail for money and power or you know, maybe the puppet masters above him and who was really the perverts <laughs> that were, you know, going to the island with underaged girls and, and boys and servants and all of the freaky stuff that you read about. I wish there was a way to differentiate because we know that there's going to be uh, uh, many of them that say, oh, I, you know, I was just 
uh, he approached me about funding for an environmental study, or he approached me about some legal advice or whatever. But then we know, uh, like the, the guy that's over Louis Vuitton, he convinced him to buy him a big old house. And so like, there, there's, there's a lot of things out there that it's like, okay, how did this guy get so deep in the pockets of people if they didn't have something to hide? I don't know. It's going to, like you say, it's going to be an interesting week. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And just like you said, the, uh, the founder of uh, uh, the women's lingerie company, um, he, his, his home that uh, Epstein was holding on to was worth, you know, over $50 million in, in New York city. Uh, that's, that's a nice little present to get from anyone. Um, so it's just very interesting what was going on in the background there that he would hand over a, a, a property like that. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's going to be, uh, it could be quite a week, but you know, as you said, we have no idea why they protected this for so long. You know, um, we, we all have suspect that it's, there's other people involved or, um, maybe the, the perpetrators, the, the client list includes some names that we have no idea that they're trying to protect. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's like you said, people above Epstein, maybe there's governments involved. We just don't know that at this point. And I'm sure we'll still have a lot of questions even after this list is released. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Let's, um, I, I want to get into the Georgia situation. So we have district attorney, Fonnie Willis who is trying to put Donald Trump in jail for the rest of his life. Uh, and new evidence is starting to come out that Secretary of State Brad Raffsenberger, who swears this was the cleanest election, that there was nothing going on in Georgia. But then we have groups digging in and they're finding there's a lot of lies happening down there. There was issues with the machines. There was double counting. There, there were issues. So can you give us a little update on what's going on with that case and, and specifically with Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger? Yeah, we've written about Raffensperger since 2000 um, and before the election even. Um, he made some changes in the election machines, the Dominion machines before the election uh, on the last minute, which wasn't supposed to happen. Again, it seems like uh, the rules are always broken, you know, and it seems to help one side. It seems to help. Uh, certainly in Georgia, a state that's been red forever, it's nice, you know, Republican Southern state, all of a sudden flipping to uh, Joe Biden, which didn't make any sense at all. Um, I, I loved the pictures of Joe Biden when he campaigned down there in Georgia, and he, he'd go into a, a community and they'd have 15 circles drawn on the ground and the people could stand there or sit in that circle. And that was his crowd. I mean, the enthusiasm was just off the charts. Um, you know, it's just such a joke. There was no, there was nothing for Joe Biden. Um, and I, and I think I've heard this too. The proof is Democrats, they're not every night going out and shoving it in our face, how popular Joe Biden is. They're not, they're not going out and because they can't. And there's the, the, the proof is that, there was no excitement for this man. It's it, we. Everyone still jokes about eighty-one million votes because no one believes it. And um, so, uh, but but anyway, going back to Georgia, uh, we we wrote about uh, Georgia several times. We were the ones who broke several stories there, by the way. And in fact, Stephen, you may know that um, we still have one lawsuit against us at the Gateway Pundit, and that is. Um, uh, that's, that's, uh, you know, still in the works. And so, uh, anyway, uh, I can't say too much about that, except for the fact that when we reported on some incidents in Georgia on election night in 2020, um, where they, they locked the room and, or, or they, they sent all the observers home. They came back in, unlocked the room. People go inside these election workers, they un unpack these boxes and they start counting ballots again. And of course, we were the ones who reported that they were shoving actually ballots, stacks of ballots with two hands through the machines uh, three, three or four times a piece. Um, and so um, we're being sued for that, which is um, really unbelievable to me because 
we have the video, <laughs> you know, yeah. the video is there. The video shows everything that's going on. But uh, anyway, th that's going on. I think one piece of, of Raffensperger is the fact that um, they did supposedly investigate that incident that I just described. And I think a lot of your audience has probably seen that. I wouldn't encourage you to put it up right now because what happened in um, with Rudy Giuliani, he was also sued by these individuals. Uh, unfortunately for Rudy, he had a very corrupt judge, I can say that still, in Washington, D.C., who uh, threw the case to these, uh, these, these uh, uh, plaintiffs. Um, so these two women were awarded $148 million just a couple of weeks ago from Rudy Giuliani for this case. And, and yet they never had to testify. They were never questioned. They never had to go sit down and take any questions from the defense. They never had to defend themselves, their story, what happened that night, and they never have defended themselves. And so um, in, in a courtroom, uh, they've, they've made plenty of interviews. They've been given awards, which is just a shocking thing when you look at the deceit of the left and the media and how they work together. These, these, these women are winning awards at the Kennedy Center and uh, at the White House with Joe Biden. And, and, um, and yet they've never testified and has, have never explained what actually was happening there uh, under oath. So I think that says a lot. We're very concerned and we hope that with our case, we do, um, we, we hope that the evidence does come out. Um, but, but with Rudy, that never happened. Instead, the corrupt judge, uh, it was a show trial. She gave the, the case to the plaintiffs and Rudy now owes them plenty of money. Uh, one report we put up recently is that uh, the FBI supposedly looked at this report and it looked at this video of these women doing these things. Brad Raffensperger also looked at this video of these uh, late night election workers um, opening the room, shoving ballots through numerous times through the machines. Um, and they came out with a report, I believe it was this year, this year, two years later, and they said, um, that's okay. It was, a, it, was, it was okay to do this. So the FBI now is telling us that it's okay to take ballots and shove them through machines numerous times. Uh, your audience won't believe that. And what is very interesting about this report though, and I reported on this recently, and that is that um, in the report, when they put down their summary, their conclusions, they say, we found that those ballots were not in a suitcase, they were in a ballot case. That's our conclusion. And so nothing was done wrong. Right. And um, but they don't address, Stephen, they don't address the primary argument. And that is, well, there's several arguments here that they unlocked the room late at night when they sent the observers home. So they lied to the observers. The observers have uh, affidavits that they released saying we were told to go home. Um, and they don't address the fact that they were shoving ballots through numerous times, the same stack. They don't even address it, which tells me, and um, uh, I, I believe it tells, tells us all that the FBI was in on it. If they're gonna say that that is okay, if they're not even gonna address that in the conclusion of their report, then what's going on? Something more is going on here. And I'm so sorry to say that on your program because I don't think any of us want to be censored, but I truly believe at the bottom of my heart that there is much more to this story. And I do believe that the FBI, to allow this to happen, to see this lawlessness that all of us can see and say that that is acceptable in America, they're in on it, okay? So that's one point with Raffensperger. Um, and I'm throwing that out there, uh, just, you know, uh, and I hope that that doesn't mean this this uh, will be censored or, you know, blacklisted this, this, uh, the, this current uh, interview. Um, there was a couple other posts I put up recently where um, he was not honest, I believe, about some of the um, election counting. Um, and I don't have that in front of me, but I did uh, break a couple other stories on Raffensperger just in the past week. Excuse me for pulling this up. But uh, he's been, I believe, dishonest. Uh, all along 
one thing he did do this this was very very big story at the time after the election raffensperger and president trump had a phone call and this was like january 2nd of 2021 a few days before january 6th and president trump had called and they were talking about the election and president trump had mentioned um that an auditor uh had found irregularities and an auditor in georgia had found numerous things that that uh the the election never should have been certified because there was just too many questions and um so uh what we found then was that uh in this phone call which i wrote about uh he told trump that there was no fraud in the election, even though there was an audit that was done that was that found that there was serious questions in that election. So he, I don't believe he was honest with Trump there. He also, uh, this, he also, uh, his group, actually it was a, a woman named, uh, I believe Sandra Fox or Fuchs. And she went to the Washington Post with this what she said was the phone call, the transcript to the phone call, but it was altered. And this got put up in the Washington Post after January 6th, and it made headlines all over. You know, oh my gosh, Trump was threatening them to, to find the ballots, to find the ballots. And what happened later was they actually, this, 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 uh, this, this uh, worker in Brad Raffensperger's office, this, this Fuchs character, um, what we found out later was that she had actually deleted the audio, but some investigators went inside her computer, found the audio in her trash file, and they were able to um, release it and release the authentic, um, uh, the authentic uh, wording from the from the conversation. And the Washington Post had to make a complete retraction of their article. So uh, that's that's pretty amazing then that they were forced to do that. And it was a huge embarrassment, but they already did the damage against Trump because it was right before his second impeachment that they released this so that everybody would get, oh my gosh, he's a criminal, he's threatening them. And yet he never did threaten them. And, and then the other thing, as I just mentioned, was that um, Raffensperger knew, here, here's what it was. My friend, Catherine Engelbrecht, um, she had sent me some information after I put up this article about Raffensperger. Catherine Engelbrecht from True the Vote wrote me and said, Jim, he was lying. Raffensperger was lying on that phone call to Trump. And she said, I know this because I spoke to him a couple weeks earlier and told him we found 52,000 suspect ballots, at least 17,000 ballots that never should have been counted because these were people who lived in different states or had moved to different counties and all of these votes came in from their old addresses. She said, those never should have been counted. I told him that in December and yet when he had the phone call with Trump in January 2nd, he didn't mention that to President Trump. He said the election was clean. So Raffensperger help, uh, hid this information from President Trump. I think that's very big news. And Catherine did too, because she contacted me about this. Yeah. So that was another thing that he did that, uh, again, um, and also, I don't think he's ever been questioned un under oath. We found that uh, Catherine told me they, that she had um, subpoenaed him and she had wanted him to sit for a deposition. And he got out of that. We found out recently he got out of another deposition. I don't think he's ever sat under oath and actually just explained some of these things that we all have some some questions about, you know, and, uh, you know, lucky him. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I, as far as Ravensburger goes, uh, there's there are a lot of questions that he still needs to answer. Wow. So the, the you know, Donald Trump. They're trying to get him in jail for the rest of his life. Meanwhile, the guy who has the answers never has to give them up. Uh, his lies keep being exposed, and yet somehow Trump's the bad guy, uh, you know, because of this other guy's lies. 
Um, speaking of speaking of Trump, um, he he said recently that he's very worried about the January six case with Jack Smith because not only did the January six select committee poison the American public to Donald Trump, uh, we know now that they cherry picked evidence, names, video footage in order to put out this specific narrative that Trump is the bad guy. He was leading the charge on what happened to the Capitol and he and he alone is, is to blame. But now he's saying, not only do we know that is, 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 uh, was fabricated, but they could have destroyed evidence that would allow him to exonerate himself. What do you know about this story? Oh, I think it's much bigger than, than we even everything we know already. And, and what we know already is, is, is very, um, uh, it's, it's just explosive. And that is because we do know that, and they reported this openly in the past uh, several weeks. And that is that after the January 6th committee, the uh, select committee to look into January 6th, which was, you know, a, a complete scam. They didn't look into anything. They didn't even mention, uh, I think they mentioned Ashley Babbitt, the one woman who was shot in the Capitol, uh, just by name, they, and maybe even in a footnote. Um, they didn't mention the other three individuals who were killed that day. They don't mention Roseanne Boylan or Benjamin Phillips or the other man um, who were killed at the Capitol that day. And um, which, again, you're doing a report and you don't even mention that four people died at the protest and they weren't cops. They were they were Trump supporters. Um, one woman, Roseanne, we were the ones who broke that story at Gateway Pundit back in 2021 because our friend Philip Anderson, who was knocked out cold, he was laying next to her. And uh, she, she passed out, too. They were getting smothered under a pile after the police kept pushing people on top of them. And they were getting sprayed with this pepper spray and they couldn't breathe. I mean, could you imagine? You know, you're gasping for air anyway. And then they're shoving people on top of you. Well, Roseanne was unconscious. And then this officer, and we've reported on this officer numerous times, Lila Morris, who uh, is, a, is a, um, I believe, a Capitol Hill police officer, who, by the way, uh, got a promotion after this and also got a free trip to Disney World after January 6th because of all the abuse she took. Well, she's uh, she's on camera beating Roseanne Boylan at least 30 times with her stick as Roseanne Boylan is uh, uh, unconscious on the steps of the Capitol. Um, she beats her so much that she loses her stick in the air. You know, she's smacking Roseanne. She loses this, her, her stick in the air. Um, it didn't stop her that this woman wasn't even moving, you know, and the people were screaming, stop, you're killing her. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, a couple of individuals were able to drag Roseanne away and they were and, and Jake Lang, a prisoner who's still languishing in prison in D.C. He was able to drag Philip uh, Anderson away. This black conservative saved Philip's life. Um, but it was too late for Roseanne. She died there. Um, the police wouldn't do anything for several minutes. Finally, um, they, these, these, uh, these Trump supporters who were trying to rescue Roseanne, they dragged Roseanne's body up towards the police saying, you got to help this woman. And the police finally took her and dragged her by her feet, this, this woman, through the Capitol, and then tried to do some uh, CPR on her inside the Capitol. The video, we posted that earlier on Gateway Funded too. Roseanne was dead. Um, and it's just tragic because uh, that didn't have to happen that day. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, uh, it's 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 a uh, it's pretty horrible what's happening. And this, uh, of course, now Trump is being uh, indicted. He has seven hundred years in prison, I think, Stephen, something like that. It's just unbelievable. And this committee, it was a sham report. And now they said that the key witnesses in this in, that they interviewed, oh my goodness, they lost the they lost the videos and and they don't have any proof of what they said. So I heard today that the top uh, the top uh, Secret Service officer they interviewed, who would be a very primary interview for their investigation. Gosh darn it, they lost his interview. You know, and why would they have lost his interview and why did it not leak out? It tells you one thing. Trump's innocent. If they would have had something on Trump, 
they would have released it. It would have been out, leaked out to all of the media outlets uh, within two days of it being uh, discovered. Within a day of his interview, they would have released it. They would have leaked it out to the Washington Post or New York Times. That never happened, but gosh darn it, they, they lost that interview. So it's just criminal what is happening. And um, also, there are very serious questions for that committee because they were supposed to they were supposed to keep this information. They were supposed to keep these interviews and, and they can't find the, the very critical interviews that would, uh, we believe, would help President Trump. And he released a statement over the weekend, a big report. Um, uh, they, can't find, they can't find these interviews now. So how's Trump supposed to defend himself against being charged with an insurrection by the January 6th Select Committee when they lost all their evidence, they lost all their interviews. Trump can't even look at it because it's not there. I mean, this is such banana republic BS that we're living through in America today. And I hope that your people are as outraged as they should be and as we are, um, because it's unbelievable that this is happening. It really is. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well. Wow. You know, the, the, I wonder if they called it the select committee because they knew they were going to select exactly what they <laughs> wanted to get Trump, you know. Um, he, he's got them so confused, you know. He just gets free real estate in their mind every day. But he's got them so confused that they're like, they don't know whether they want him dead or in jail for 700 years. They're like, ah, we don't know which one to, which one to wish yeah. on the guy. It's just sad. Uh, all right, final, final question, Jim. I, I appreciate you coming on. Um, the last time Democrats tried to remove a pre presidential candidate at a high level uh, was with President Abraham Lincoln, who went on to be an absolute hero, the founder of the Republican Party. We now see this going on with Donald J. Trump. Uh, luckily, California, shockingly, is like, wait a minute, we're not going to do this. Um, probably because things weren't going well in Colorado, right? Colorado's like, well, if, if it doesn't happen, it will default him back to the ballot. Now Maine, because this Obama fundraiser, Joe Biden loving Secretary of State, um, Shana Bellows makes the decision, I don't like Trump, therefore, you know, millions of people in Maine now have their right to vote for who they want removed. What is going on in the country? I thought that, I thought it was the Republicans that were uh, interfering with people's right to vote. But it turns out, once again, it's the Democrats doing what they're blaming the other person for. Yeah, isn't that something? They're preaching democracy. That's what they're running on. They're running on save democracy, right? As they destroy democracy in front of our eyes, you know? And again, like you said, we put that article up where uh, it was Abraham Lincoln back in 1860 who was running for president. And of course, at the time, um, things were really rocky in the United States, pretty much like they are today. I don't think we're to that extent yet, obviously, but um, it was a very serious time in, the, in America. And the people of America did choose Abraham Lincoln, and we saw that the country was safe. And uh, thank God for that. You know, I think God was protecting us at that time. Um, but the, the southern states, the Democrat states, uh, they didn't want Abraham Lincoln on, on the ballot even. They didn't even want him as a choice, so they removed his name from the ballots. Um, Abraham Lincoln, of course, was the first Republican uh, president, and uh, he, was, he was a great abolitionist, and he freed all the slaves, um, something that's not taught to children today. Uh, uh, they have no idea that it was Republicans for the next, for 1860 and through 19, early 1900s who, uh, completely passed all the civil rights legislation, hundreds of bills. I put that list up before. I need to continue to put that up. Hundreds of times they passed his legislations against Jim Crow, the Republicans did, against um, uh, the Ku Klux Klan and all of these different laws that they passed after the Civil War to, to help uh, the, these, these deprived Black Americans who were, you know, trying to make their way in the world after they had been liberated from slavery. Um, and it was Democrats that wouldn't vote, not even a one, on several of these bills, not even one vote, right? So that's the history of America, but they tried, they did, they were successful. They took Lincoln off of the ballot in the Southern states. And, uh, and 
so Lincoln was able to carry the, the U.S. in 1860, and um, uh, thank God for it. Uh, he won, you know, big states at the time, uh, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, um, I think New Jersey, a couple others. Uh, Illinois was starting to get big at the time. Um, so he won those states, uh, uh, Iowa and Missouri. But, oh, he didn't win Missouri. Someone else did. But uh, anyway, it was enough to put him over the top, and he was our, our president. But um, now they're trying to do the same thing. I mean, uh, is there, 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 there is nothing these people won't do, and we know that. Um, I know that. I mean, they're trying to destroy Gateway Pundit. They're just try, trying to destroy my life. They're trying to destroy everything I've built um, and take everything from me um, for what I believe and will uh, always believe for telling the truth about uh, the facts about this this past election and numerous stories, of course, but they're they're trying to destroy us and others and and especially Donald Trump. And it's very very serious time we are in. Maybe we are at that point like they were in 1860. I don't know that. I um I'm I'm very much uh, surprised. Maybe not surprised, but um, m maybe uh, the. the you know, kind of disappointed that not more people are out in the streets, you know, but I guess when they uh, send the FBI to a thousand, two thousand people's homes across the country and, and uh, at six in the morning and bust in their doors and arrest them for walking inside the Capitol, you know, people might start getting a little afraid of speaking out. So uh, anyway, we'll see, but we're in a very serious, uh, serious point in our history. And um, you know, I hope, uh, I hope we can make it through and I know we'll be fighting. I know you will too, Steven, but, um, anyway, and I hope this interview didn't get you in any trouble, but, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't hold back. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I, and, I and there's a lot more I could tell you, but, uh, um, anyway, uh, it's, it's going to be an interesting year. Yeah. Oh, that's it, for sure. It, it will. And I'm going to put a link to your website. In fact, just before we got on real, real quickly. You, you guys had posted an article about Trump saying he's going to try to go for New York and New Jersey. This is huge. Yeah. Can you yeah. imagine if those swung because they're so mad about illegal immigration, the welfare programs, uh, the high taxation? I mean, these are states that used to vote this direction. And, mm -hmm. you know, he, he was able to flip some states that no one ever thought he'd be able to flip. And now he's saying, I don't know if we'll be able to do it, but there's a lot of good people in those states. And I think they want America protected. Yeah. And I would, I'd like to add to that, uh, Kara Castronova, who, who contributes to Gateway Pundit, and she also works at Newsmax. She released a video recently where she went down to the uh, Bronx, the bluest of all the boroughs in New York City, uh, the seven boroughs, um, went for Biden like 90%. And she was in the street talking to people who they're going to vote for. And she released this video and all the, everybody's saying Biden. I, and I asked her, I said, Kara, uh, how many people did you have to talk to to get you know those answers? She said, Jim, literally everyone on the street I spoke with, they all said Biden. Um, and this was, that's why Trump probably thinks that these states could be in play. Because, you know, of course, I also believe that there's a lot of fraud in our elections. I also believe that Democrats cheat any way they can. Um, so, you know, we, we will see. But I, I do see a sea change in some of these minority communities because they understand what's happening to Trump. Um, and uh, instead of the, the Democrats making him someone to hate, a lot of these people are feeling sympathy for President Trump, as they should. Um, and uh, they feel like he's one of them. So really, really going to be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you, and a happy new year. I hope it's a very, uh, your best year yet, Stephen.